Welcome everyone. I am Candace Porter and today we're going to talk about schedule fast tracking and schedule crashing. These are two schedule compression techniques that can help you shorten the overall duration of your project schedule, which means if we need to wrap up the project even sooner, then we can take one or both of these approaches to do so. If you have not been to this channel before, we focus on all things project management. I'd love it if you subscribe and check out some of the other videos. The first term that I would like to describe, and then I will move on and give you some real world examples of when you may be able to use it, and I'll show you a visual for any of those of you that are visual learners very much like me. Fast tracking, this is the first schedule compression technique. And this is where tasks that are normally completed in sequence, so task one will be completed before you start task two, task two will be completed before you complete task three and so forth. We actually start to do some of the work in parallel. Again, I'll show you a visual um, because I think that it's really helpful for that explanation. The downside of using fast tracking as a schedule compression technique is that it really does increase the risk of rework. So when there's dependencies and the ideal way to complete the work is task one completed first and then task two, if you're doing them in parallel and something changes with task one, then that may also impact task two, requiring some rework. The second schedule compression technique that I'd like to define is called crashing. Schedule crashing is a technique that focuses on adding additional resources. So we're going to add additional people to work on a task or multiple tasks to shorten the amount of time to complete the work. Crashing generally increases the cost of the project, so that could be the downside because maybe we're paying two people now instead of one so that we can get the work done faster. Regardless of which of these techniques you're using, it's really important that you know your critical path. And that's because the critical path, there's a whole video on it if you haven't watched it, but the critical path makes up the overall start date and end date of our project and it shows the sequence of work to be done. If you start fast tracking or crashing tasks that are not on the critical path, your project is not going to end any sooner than it's currently scheduled to. So again, we need to know our critical path so that we can be really strategic about this fast tracking and the crashing. Let's take a look at a visual here and then I'll give you some examples. Let's say that this is our current project schedule. This is how we planned it. It would be the ideal way to complete it. So we're going to complete task one and then task two and then task three, and we have a specific resource assigned. Then we have a separate resource that is going to be working on task four, task five, and task six. However, in this example, we are creating a new software product and it's going to take 12 months until our new software product is finalized. However, we have a current customer and they approach us and they're really excited to get their hands on this new product. And they say, you know, at the 10 month point, in exactly 10 months, we need a new software to be implemented or to at least begin the implementation. Is there any way that you can move that product availability date forward by two months. Okay, so we look at our project schedule. We determine that we can fast track some of the tasks. So maybe task one, two, and three focus on documenting the user interface. And task four, five, and six really focus on coding. Well, why don't we overlap and start the coding before the user interface design work is completed. We have two different resources and we decide once the first resource has the first task completed 
regarding user interface design, and then moves on to task two, we're also going to have our coding resource step in and at the same time, start working on task four, five, and six. Now, you can see the risk here. Again, we're exchanging time for risk because if something changes with that user interface design, it's most likely going to change the coding as well, and there may be rework for task four, five, and six. So again, that's fast tracking. It's where we start to overlap work. They're going to be completed in parallel with different resources, and we're exchanging time for the risk of having to complete some rework. When we talk about crashing, this could be an option as well. And with resource crashing, we say, okay, well maybe it's too risky. We know that there's gonna be quite a few changes when it comes to the user interface design as we continue to work on task two and three. And so what we're going to do is we're going to resource crash the task instead, which means we're going to get another person assigned to support completing task one, two, and three. So we now have two people working on the user interface design so that we can get through that work twice as fast. And then we're going to assign two people to the coding so that we can move through that twice as fast. So we are still completing the work in sequence, task one, two, and three, followed by task four, five, and six. However, because we are adding additional resources, we're going to get the work done faster. So with resource crashing, remember, we're exchanging time, we're going to get it done faster at the cost of money because we're going to pay additional resources to be working on those tasks to get them done faster. Either one of these work to get the work done faster. Um, however, you just have to ask yourself, what's our risk appetite? Is rework okay? And do we have enough budget or enough human resources to add them? So I hope that you make the best decision for you and your project and know that schedule fast tracking and schedule crashing are two schedule compression techniques that can be used. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me.